So let's take a look at this in detail. So in this random surfing model, at any page, we would assume a uh, random surfer would uh, choose the next page to visit. So this is a small graph here. That's of course an oversimplification of the complicated web. But let's say there are four documents here, right? D1, D2, D3, and D4. And let's assume that a random surfer or random walker can be on any of these pages. Uh, and then uh, the random surfer could uh, uh, decide to uh, just randomly jump into any page or follow a link and then visit the next page. So if the random surfer is at D1, then you know, with some probability, the random surfer will follow the links. Now there are two outlinks here. One is pointing to D3, the other is pointing to D4. So the random surfer could pick any of these two to reach D3 and D4. But uh, it also assumes that the, the, the random surfer might uh, get bored sometimes. So the random surfer would decide to ignore the actual links and simply randomly uh, jump to any page on the web. So uh, if it does that, uh, it would uh, be able to reach any of the other pages, even though there's no uh, link directly uh, from D1 to that page. So this is the assumed uh, random surfing model. Now imagine a random surfer is really doing uh, a surfing like this. Then we can ask the question, how likely on average the surfer would actually reach uh, a particular page, like D1 or D2 or D3. That's the average probability of visiting a particular page. And this probability is precisely what page rank computes. So the page rank score of a document is the average probability that the surfer visits a particular page. Now intuitively, this would uh, basically capture the in-link account. Why? Because if a page has a lot of in-links, then it would have a higher chance of being visited because there will be more opportunities of having the surfer to follow a link to come to this page. And this is why uh, uh, the random surfing model actually captures the idea of counting the in-links. Note that it also considers the indirect in-links. Why? Because if the pages uh, that point to you have themselves a lot of inlinks, that would mean the random surfer will very likely reach one of them. And therefore, it increases the chance of visiting you. So this is a, a nice way to capture both indirect and direct links. So mathematically, how can we compute this probability? In order to uh, see that, we need to take a look at uh, how this probability is computed. So first, of all, let's take a look at the transition matrix here. And this is just a matrix with values indicating how likely ran the random surfer will go from one page to another. So each row uh, stands for a starting page. For example, row one would indicate the probability of going to any other four pages from D1. And here we see there are only non, uh, two non-zero entries. Uh, each is a, a one over two and a half. So uh, this is because if you look at the graph, D1 is pointing to D3 and D4. There's no link from D1 to D1 itself or D2. So we've got zeros for um, the first two columns and uh, 0.5 for uh, D3 and D4. In general, the element in this matrix M sub IJ is the probability of going from DI to DJ. And obviously, uh, for each row, uh, the values uh, should sum to one because uh, the surfer would have to go to precisely one of these other pages. Right? So this is the transition matrix. Now, how can we compute the probability of a surfer visiting a page. Well, if you look at the, the surf model, then basically uh, we can compute the probability of reaching a page as follows. So here on the left hand side, you see it's the probability of visiting page DJ at time t plus one. So it's the next time point. 
Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the equation involves the probability of uh, at page d i at time t. So you can see the subscript index t here, and that indicates that's the probability uh, that the surfer was at uh, a document at time t. Okay. So uh, the equation basically uh, captures the two possibilities of reaching a dj at time t plus 1. What are these two possibilities? Well, one is uh, through random surfing, and one is uh, through following a link, as we just explained. So the first part captures the probability that the random surfer would reach this page by following a link. And you can see uh, the random surfer chooses this strategy with probability 1 mi minus alpha, as we assumed. And so there is a factor of 1 minus alpha here. But the main part is really a sum over all the possible pages that the uh, surfer could have been at time t. Right? There are n pages, so it's a sum over all the possible n pages. Inside the sum, it's a product of two probabilities. One is the probability that the surfer uh, was at di at time t. That's p sub t of d uh, i. The other is the transition probability from di to dj. And so in order to reach this uh, dj page, the surfer must first be at di at time t, and then also would have to follow the link to go from di to dj. So the probability is the probability of being at di at time t multiplied by the probability of uh, going from that page to the target page dj here. The second part is a similar sum. The only difference is that now the transition probability is a uniform uh, transition probability, 1 over n. And this part captures the probability of reaching this page uh, through random jumping. Right? So uh, the form is exactly the same. And in, in this also allows us to see uh, why page rank essentially assume the smoothing of the transition matrix. If you think about this 1 over n as uh, coming from another transition matrix that has all the elements uh, being 1 over n, the uniform matrix, then you can see very clearly essentially we can merge the two parts right? because they are of the same form. We can imagine there's a different matrix that's a combination of this m and that uniform matrix where every element is 1 over n. And in this sense, uh, page rank uses this idea of smoothing and ensuring that there's no zero uh, entry in such a transition matrix. Now, of course, this is a time dependent uh, um, calculation of the probabilities. Now, we can imagine uh, if we want to compute the average probabilities, the average probabilities probably would satisfy this equation. Uh, without considering the time index. So let's drop the time index and just assume that they will be equal. Now this would give us n equations because for each page we have such an equation. And if you look at the what variables we have in these equations, there are also precisely n variables, right? So this basically means we now have a system of uh, n equations with n variables, and these are linear equations. So basically now the problem boils down to solve uh, this system of equations. And here I also show the, uh, the equations in the matrix form. It's the vector P here uh, equals a matrix, or the transpose of the matrix here, and multiplied by the vector again. Now, if you still remember some knowledge that you've learned from linear algebra, and then you will realize uh, this is precisely the equation for eigenvector, right? When you multiply the matrix by this vector, uh, you get the same value as this vector. And this uh, can be solved by using uh, iterative algorithm. So the, the equations here on the above are basically taken from the previous uh, slide. So you see the relation between the um, 
the page rank scores of different pages. And in this iterative approach or power approach, uh, we simply start with uh, randomly initialize the vector P and then we repeatedly just uh, um, update this P by multiplying uh, the metrics here by this uh, P vector. So I also show a concrete uh, example here. So you can see this now, if we assume uh, alpha is 0.2, then with the example that we show here on this uh, slide, we have the original transition matrix here, right? That, that encodes the graph, the actual links. And we have this smoothing uh, transition matrix, uniform transition matrix, representing uh, random jumping. And we can combine them together with a linear interpolation to form another matrix that would be like this. So essentially, we can imagine now the web looks like this, can, can be captured by that. There are virtual links uh, between all the pages now. So the page rank algorithm would just initialize the P vector first, and then just compute the updating of this P vector uh, by using this uh, matrix multiplication. Now, if you rewrite this matrix multiplication uh, in terms of just individual equations, you will see this. And this is basically the updating formula for this particular pages, page rank score. So you can also see, you know, if you want to compute the value of this updated score for D1, you basically multiply this rule right, by this column and we take the dot product of the two, right? And that would give us the value for this value. So this is how we updated the, the vector. We started with some initial values for these guys, right, for, for these, and then we just revised the scores, we generate a new uh, set of scores, and the updating formula is this one. So we just repeatedly apply this, and here it converges. And when the matrix is like this, where there's no zero values and it can be guaranteed to converge. And at that point that we will just uh, have the page rank scores for all the pages. Now we typically set the initial values just to one over N. Right? So interestingly, this updating formula can be also interpreted as propagating scores over the graph. Right? Can you see why? Well, if you look at this formula, and then compare that with this graph. And can you imagine how we might be able to interpret this as essentially propagating scores over the graph? I hope you will see that uh, indeed we can imagine we have values initialized on each of these pages, right? So we can have values here, let's say that's one over four for each. And then we're going to use this matrix to update this, the scores. And if you look at the equation here, this one, uh, basically we're going to combine the scores of the pages that possibly would lead to uh, reaching this page. So we'll look at all the pages that are pointing to this page and then combine their scores and propagate the score, uh, uh, the sum of the scores to this document, uh, D1. So we look at the, uh, the scores that represent the probability that the random surfer would be visiting the other pages before it reached D1, and then just do the propagation to simulate the probability um, of uh, reaching this, this uh, page D1. So there are two interpretations here. One is just uh, the matrix multiplication, and we repeatedly uh, multiply um, the vector by this matrix. But uh, the other is to just think of it as propagating the scores repeatedly on the web. So in uh, practice, the computation of page rank score is actually efficient because the matrix is sparse and there are some ways to transform the, the equation so that you avoid actually uh, literally computing uh, the values of, for all those elements. Sometimes you may also normalize the equation, and that would give you uh, a somewhat different form of the equation, but then the ranking of pages uh, would not change. 
the results of this potential problem of zero outlink problem. Uh, in that case, if the, a page does not have any uh, outlink, then the uh, probability of these um, pages uh, would, would not sum to one. Basically, the probability of reaching the next page from this page would not sum to one, mainly because we have lost some probability mass when we assume there's some probability that the surfer will try to follow links, but then there's no link to follow. And one possible solution is simply to uh, use a page-specific damping uh, factor, and that, that could easily fix this. Basically, that's to say alpha would be 1.0 for a page with no outlink. In that case, uh, the surfer would just have to randomly jump to another page instead of trying to follow a link. So there are many extensions of page rank. Uh, one extension is to do topic-specific page rank. Note that page rank doesn't really use the query information, right? So, um, it, so we can make page rank uh, query specific. However, so for example, uh, in the topic specific page rank, we can simply assume when the surfer uh, is bored, uh, the surfer is not going to randomly jump to any page on the web. Instead, it's going to jump uh, to only those pages that are relevant to a query. For example, if the query is about the sports then we could assume that when it's doing random jumping, it's going to randomly jump to a sports page. By doing this, then we can bias the page rank to a topic like sports. And then if you know the current query is about sports, then you can use this specialized page rank score to rank documents. That would be better than if you use a generic page rank score. Page rank is also a general algorithm that can be used in many other applications for uh, network analysis, particularly for example, social networks. You can imagine if you compute the page rank scores for a social network where a link might indicate a friendship relation, you will get some meaningful scores for people. Mm -hmm.